All right, coming out of SummerSlam, it seems that he's uh, more of a regular schedule, but he's going to end up tearing his bicep in a match with Jake Roberts, which will knock him out of action for a while. Uh, Jake has let bygones be bygones with Sid, but apparently they had some heat during this time. Uh, he did not like working with Sid at all, and the two did not get along. And uh, Ted, I've heard mixed things about Sid over the years as far as his attitude and work ethic are concerned. Uh, but to you, a, a nice enough guy generally? You know, uh, when I re- when I worked with him, was right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he's probably trying to behave himself. And, well, uh, well, that and you know, you know, it, it's like you know, obviously, you know, when you see a guy like that, you know, uh, you know, that's the other thing that uh, uh, you know, you got to know what your what your position is and why you're there. You know, uh, it's kind of like uh, I, I got one of the biggest heel pushes that they ever gave anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and, and with all the, the limousines, the, the, you know, first class airfares and, you know, uh, you, you know, everywhere you're, you're going to be seen, you're going to, they're going to, they're, they're, they're going to think you're really that guy. And, and, and so then you, you know, but you, you realize that at some point, you know, the big, the big hero's got to beat you. And then you go, you, you know, you, you go, you don't go all the way down to the bottom. You're not, you don't, you're never on an opening match, but then you work your way back to the top. To where you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. yeah. So yeah, it's it, at this point your job was you know when you worked with Sid was to get him over, and Sid was yeah. behaving himself with you apparently uh, since he had just come into the company, so he wouldn't have the problems that he had with Jake, and uh, it's it makes sense that you wouldn't have uh, any issues with the guy along the way. Yeah. Um, it does make me wonder, though, if maybe like internally you may have had some issues with him, you know, because when he returns to the company, he quickly turns heel. And it's very clear that Vince sees a lot in him because he's got Hogan at WrestleMania 8. So, again, from a skill standpoint, you know, I hear Sid get compared to Warrior all the time um, just because it's like neither of them were especially skilled in the ring. And here's Sid. He's coming in, and now he's not a baby face anymore. Now he's he's a heel. So he's in your territory all of a sudden. He's a uh-huh. heel, and he's getting this main event massive push at WrestleMania um, were you, how did you feel about it? Were, did it, were you kind of like, uh, upset or is it like, Hey, look, his guy looks which, amazing. Which, which WrestleMania was that? That's WrestleMania eight. And that would have been in, oh gosh, Indianapolis, the Hoosier Dome. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I, you know, and at, at the end that, at that time, you know, now I'm, now I have a tag team partner. So you you weren't at all concerned with with Sid and what was going on there because okay you're not you're not in the main event against Hogan but you are in a, a very featured match as the tag team champion exactly yeah I got you um, Sid is only going to last about four months after he returns to the company from injury and he'll reportedly quit due to creative differences when it came to taking a loss to the Ultimate Warrior on two house shows on April twenty sixth and. Uh, 1992. Um, there's also a narrative out there which uh, was brought to us by Jason. I, th- I think you say the name Meyer on Facebook. Um, he says, Urban legend states that Sid's departure in 1992 was either A, he failed a drug tw- test and quit rather than serve a suspension, or B, he wanted to play softball. Uh, so <laughs> could you imagine ever quitting your job because you wanted to play softball? Uh, no, uh, it's, it's crazy. It's craziness. You know, so, I mean, uh, so what was the deal? He had to, was he going to wrestle the warrior? So that's what, that's what I think is really at, at the core of this. Maybe he failed a drug test. Maybe he wanted to play softball, but uh, Sid up to this point has not lost in, in the WWF. He's maybe had a DQ loss or two along the way, but he's been like an, a, an unstoppable force. And now he's got to put over uh, the ultimate warrior twice in one day. Uh, I, I believe it was Boston. And then they went, well, down you, know what? you know, <laughs> just between you and me, that would have pissed me off. <laughs> right. I mean, you, you, you know how I feel. I mean, you know, God, God rest his soul. Uh, but that was, I mean, the ultimate warrior was one of the most selfish guys who ever stepped into wrestling. You know, he, he didn't understand that, that we're all working together to tell a story. And it's not real. You know, and so no matter how big you are and how great you look, you know, it's kind of like if I want to make you look like shit out in that ring, I know how to do it. 
Yep. You know, I can either make you look like King Kong or I can make you look like Ding Dong. And a good heel knows how to do that. And, you know, Ted, you saying this is making me wonder, like, who's who's running that match? It's uh, like uh, Ultimate Warrior and Sid. It's God bless both of them. They both they both <laughs> passed away. But it's like, OK, it, no, it's the blind leading the blind out there. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I have no idea. So that that could have been where they got where he got pissed off too because it's like you know you don't know what you're doing out there neither is this guy and you've got to put him over and it's a mess. Sid will return to the company in 1995 and before he's put with you he comes in as the new bodyguard for Shawn Michaels and Shawn's feud with Diesel. Just three years after walking out on the company, Sid is back and now he's got even more of a reputation after having nearly a nearly deadly dust up with a man you helped to mentor in this business, Arn Anderson. Uh, they, of course, overseas, you and I have talked about this, this before, they were overseas. Uh, some words were exchanged in the hotel bar. A little bit later on, Sid comes up to Arn Anderson's room, uh, looks to attack Arn. Allegedly, somebody grabbed a hold of some scissors. There's some stabbing involved during this altercation. And uh, it's senseless, you know. Uh, two wives nearly lost husbands. Uh, children nearly lost their fathers as a result of a, uh, a, a silly fight that, that started over a disagreement in a bar or whatever. But, you know, I say all that to say, uh, he, the rumor has it he was named Psycho Sid as a result of this altercation with Arn, uh, where uh, I guess uh, they had brought up to Jim Cornette, hey, we're thinking about bringing Sid Vicious in. And uh, Cornette was like, don't bring that guy in. He's a psycho. And next thing you know, He's coming in as Psycho Sid. Uh, did you hold any kind of a grudge against Sid after you heard about what happened between he and Arn? Uh, I never, I don't, I don't, you know, I never held a grudge. I mean, there, there was no reason for me to really hold a grudge. I said, you know, but, you know, it's, it's like he's not somebody that I wanted to hang around at, at all. Right. And I didn't. Until you were forced to, which is where we're getting here. Uh, Sid was put with you after turning on Shawn Michaels, and now he's touted as your centerpiece for the Million Dollar Corporation. And we've touched on it before, Ted, that you know Vince wanted to put you with him to kind of keep his oars in the water and make sure that he it was where he needed to be on time and remained responsible while he was out on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you feel when you're approached with this new responsibility of semi-mentoring this, this guy? Well, I really wasn't mentoring. My, more, more than anything else, I was his babysitter. <laughs> I mean, really, you, you just said it, and that's what Ben said to me. He says, I want, I, I'm putting you with him and so you can help him keep both his, his damn oars in the water and not get in trouble. 